Earl Portland drinking the craft bullshit and reviewing the Asian hoodies. <laughs> Shout out Steel Worldwide. Uh, where do we put you right here? This is where all, all my knives went. This is one of my favorites right here. Um, craft beer and talking about anger. And I've done, I don't know if I've done a video on anger before, uh, like as, as feeling it. I think I've done talking about anger as a signal to think but I had a really interesting encounter with anger one of my friends that I've known a while said I can't imagine you angry because uh, quite normally I feel angry and as I feel the emotion I think what's bothering me and I say hey the following things are bothering me I want you to clearly know what it is that's bothering me um, how the effect you're having and most likely point out uh, why you should stop the fuckery. Oh my god. That's so delicious. There's a, there's a line uh, I should look up where this comes from. The heart of man is unknowable. You could let me know, if you Google that, let me know where that comes from. The heart of man is unknowable. Some people aren't going to understand their own motivations. Some motivations are going to be so obscure and so... Like imagine you have a bunch of these different kind of motivations and they, they're set up over a long period of time. Each one's like a, a slideshow, like a projector. And it's projecting an image up at my ceiling of this idea, uh, this concept, this plan. Um, and then as time goes on, that gets added to and some things are, are, are pulled away. Um, it might be based on something that took place a long time ago and then that, that thing that it was based on might vanish, but those plans are still there. But without seeing what started it all, you're just looking up at all these different images up against the ceiling, you're going to look up at that and think, that's gibberish, none of those things are connected to one another. Long story short, it, I got, I was looking up at these images, so to speak, um, and I got so frustrated with the fact that it didn't make sense that it was almost like everything that didn't make sense like literally in my mind felt like it burned away like I was just dismissing this that and the other thing uh, in like this angry like mental tantrum of like smashing ideas and then for whatever reason probably subconsciously um, the few ideas that I left standing made perfect fucking sense when seen alone like you can't tell what place those things there these ideas these concepts you well i kind of could but even without knowing like a, having a rough idea what was left made sense it's still ridiculous it still causes like me to feel a huge amount of anger but suddenly i'm like oh i mean I, that would never occur to me. That's thing. I would never occur to me to uh, to form this structure, this like this life structure based on this. But fucking, it does occur to some people. All right, now I got one one small short story, uh, and then then we're done. Then I'm actually going to be barbecuing and uh, still working on my 180 goal, and so I'm going to like set up uh, some exercise equipment and make that rather than go straight into my shed make an angry video and drink I'm gonna work out and then get angry in my shed and make and drink 
Well, hopefully I won't be angry a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm just really, actually I'm not angry very often, so. I meet this person. And we're talking about old age. They're 51. Uh, getting older. And how your uh, mindset changes. And uh, I was talking about like, it used to bother me when I was younger and I'd be wrong about something. Or, if I was not treated fairly or if something was awry or something like that, I'd be right on that. I was like micromanaging every slight and wrong against me. Uh, and this person said, uh, well, you might find as you get in your 50s where you just start ca stop caring about other people's opinions. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get that. We talked a little bit more about it. And uh, I did not, I thought they meant that someone's like, hey, hey, you're wrong, man. Or like, uh, hey, I really believe in Trump's going to be a great president. You'd be like, yeah, really? All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Believe that. Um but throughout the conversation, based from that point on, and I was like, I was kind of picking up on something in expressions and in eye, like in eyes, and that when I would like, oh, I would say like, oh, really? I think that's a great way for things to be. Um, I get this expression, this eye thing, and then after that statement, I'm like, if you literally don't care what other people think, that's that expression. That whole like. Yeah, anyway, so, you know, like, I don't care what you think. That was just, you're just taking time out of me speaking. Um, and when I thought that, like, this person literally does not care what I think. And so, out of interest, I started being very interested in what they were saying. They liked that. It's the whole thing of, like, I thought that was, like, a little bit odd, like, you don't care about what other people think, but you want other people to care about what you think. I found that slightly odd, but it was absolutely accurate. Later, uh, I made some references to a couple things that I had said in direct response to some of the things they said, and they had no recollection of it. They literally were fucking tuning me out when my mouth was moving. I can't, for the life of me, I can't figure out why this person would want to talk to me, except for the fact that probably not many people want to, and so, like, they're using this opportunity to, like, get to say some things that most people just tune them out. It's like, hey, listen, you don't care what I say, I don't really care to talk to you, you know, like, Jesus. Even after telling that story, suddenly way more stuff makes sense about that person. Holy fuck, it's the whole thing about anger. I also know I'm getting angry when I make that my voice goes up a couple pitches. Uh, what else? That's it. I got my weekend coming up. I'm going to uh, clean up the backyard, donate another van load of stuff, which will make the third van load of possessions to go. Um, and this time I'm taking old furniture. I hate to say it, but I'm getting rid of this great couch. I love this couch. I've had this forever. I saved this from the trash. I love it, but like, I've got this futon now. Futon makes more sense. I like this for uh, having it in the backyard. I throw it out there and have friends sit on it. Um, it seems like just like taking up a bunch of space just for that thing. Like I, could ha I have like those camping chairs that take up way less space. They're easy to store. They're lightweight. And they're comfortable. Same action, same thing actually about like these chairs right here. Like, I like these chairs. Once again, they're super mega comfortable to sit on outside, but they don't belong in here taking up space. Uh, rugby. That's often another video on frustration. Cause that's that's what's making me purge all these things. I get annoyed, like, I keep finding boxes that are essentially a junk drawer. And I'm like, how much junk am I storing? How many, like, bolts, pens, flashlights? Like, oh, flashlights will be, always be handy, and that's why I found, like, 30 of them. 
I've got like this big box of like just head flashlights. These things, I've got a million of them. God, I'm, I'm fairly angry. I need to calm down. I've, my anger has taken me as far as it can go, and now I just need to chill the fuck out. Asian hoodies. Some bullshit. <laughs>